uh, but also um, our friends in the Department of Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so moving on, um, we have, uh, I believe this week, if not uh, just a few days before this week, a 2024 roadmap from the Department of Homeland Security um, on the use of artificial intelligence. And actually, Kit, you found something very interesting in here. Yes. Let's start with the... Sure. The well, bio. I mean, they, they, they uh, when they're setting out the alleged threat um, inherent, um, <laughs> I mean, it's quite remarkable. They claim that AI can be used to combat fentanyl. Uh, yes. Because, well, I mean, a, a, an AI police officer can't, you know, get drowsy by exposure to <laughs> fentanyl. But, yeah. but, but there's a whole section on how uh, you know, the advent of AI may make it easier for malicious actors to develop weapons of mass destruction and other related threats. Of particular concern is the risk of AI-enabled misuse of synthetic nucleic acids to create biological weapons. Also, AI can be used to generate child sex abuse material. Um, uh, I mean, this is insane. This is completely... Re read, read towards the end of this paragraph. Though. Okay. So, which... Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll read it. Similarly, while AI has already enabled innovation in the physical and biological sciences, it has also the potential to substantially lower the barrier of entry for non-experts to design, synthesize, acquire, use chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear weapons. So, I think that uh, the case is closed on uh, the uh, weapons in Iraq, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they were AI You're generated. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so I think... Just because it was a deep fig doesn't mean yeah, it was yeah, AI. Yeah, it wasn't real. That's yeah. why we couldn't find it. Like, right. it's just, I think that, that, that this is this entire document is like deeply disturbing and then it's a bit like when they're talking... Yeah, when they're talking about how, ooh, AI can be used to make WMD. Hmm. I mean, it's not, you know, at the top of my list in terms of threats i would think arising <laughs> from ai but i mean it it, it it does seem like predictive programming like foreshadowing yeah of like oh well we need to crack down on on this because reasons i mean that the, the gchq britain's quote unquote signals intelligence agency which is does um, very, something very different um it, they uh I, I think it was in 2020 released a report where they effectively talked about how they wanted to harness um ai and then like the 99 percent of the report was about child protection and it's yeah. like that's obviously not what they're, they're sure. in, in, interested in yeah i mean there is i mean in, in terms of um uh, ai being used to generate child sex abuse material this will mean the fbi no longer has to force female interns who look young right. to pretend to be children yeah. to take revealing pictures which has happened many times um the fbi is the world the the dark web's biggest purveyor of child sex material and they use it for entrapment purposes and some of these people these these pervs who access this actually end up walking free because they successfully argue that they were conned into it by, by the fbi um, um of course the bureau f has faced no no consequences as a result but but yeah that it the specter of child protection is very very effective it's the kind of thing which the media would obviously just run with without asking much in the way of in the way of questions um the the we know for a fact that um uh that the, the dhs via uh scissor um or caesar um what which pronunciation would you prefer alex uh let's say caesar caesar okay so you know, you know like the like the wu-tang yeah the absolutely. Caesar. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 the scissor like, yeah like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, on the cutting room floor i think like enter, <laughs> enter the 36 chambers of ai but, they, but, they, <laughs> but, they, but, they, but there is a so we know for a fact that scissor is already heavily um uh, invested and, ex and experimenting with um, artificial intelligence and like, big data tools. So there is a bunch of leaked documents, I believe, that were released by Ken Klippenstein, now formerly um, of The Intercept, That's right. which basically documented... So um, people may not remember, um, or they may have just suppressed it because it was so awful. Uh, about two years ago, the, D the Department for Homeland Security announced that they were launching a disinformation governance board. Um, I mean, it's just like so Orwellian and like really <laughs> by uh, headed by your favorite uh terrible 
musical enthusiast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. headed by Scary Poppins, Miss um, Miss Nina Jankovic, um, who is now a, a uh, on the Farah is a British um, asset. She is she's foreign agent. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the British, she's she's lobbying on behalf of uh, the Centre for Information Resilience. This is another mm. um, terrifying uh, Orwellian. Like the Centre for Information Resilience has come to give you a brain realignment. <laughs> like, 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 uh, and it's just like you know what could what could be what could be less threatening than that. And, yeah, like, and so she is on on Capitol Hill trying to raise funding and drum up business for this organization which is run by two longtime British intelligence operatives one of whom had, I have jousted with a lot and has called me a conspiracy theorist and complained that, about my use of run-on sentences amongst other things uh, his name is Ross Burley but these are these are two longtime British psychological warfare specialists the, um, the Disinformation Governance Board was announced with much fanfare, but with absolutely zero clarity on what it would and wouldn't do uh, two years ago. And then within, a, I think it was two or three weeks, it got shut down mm. because of the huge controversy, because it wasn't at all clear what it was meant to be doing um, or whether there would be, whether it would be actively policing what people said online, whether it would be a censorship unit that was uh, demanding with menaces that Twitter et al remove content it didn't like and of course there is the burning question of what is dis disinformation um, and the answer is always information that powerful people do not want in the public domain um, almost without exception and so there are these leaked files related to the disinformation governance board which show that despite the fact that it got shut down the uh, in theory the underlying infrastructure behind it which was run by scissor um had been going for a long time and indeed carried on after the board's dis dissolution um publicly and it, the, it, the, the the files document how by the time of the board's launch the, the scissor was using a quote unquote social media aggregation tool mm -hmm. produced by Tangles, which was created by Cobwebs, a company founded by a former Israeli occupation force, uh, sorry, by former Israeli occupation force cyber warfare specialists. Um, and it is already widely used by US law enforcement and its, its, its head of sales is a for, formerly a, a Connecticut police department chief. Um, and, and, and yeah, the, in effect, this is a social media spying tool which yeah. is not available for general use and has all sorts of rather terrifying applications and capabilities for um, uh, spying on what people are saying publicly and privately. Uh, and SIS has already been using it. Mm -hmm. I mean, no reference to um, weapons of mass destruction and child porn. In, sure. In, in, in these, in these no, films. it's it, it's it's cl very clearly directed at uh, speech. Yes. Um, I, and just and also just but, but I mean beyond speech, like just just dissent as well. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it, 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 it is about monitoring who is organizing protests, who is attending them, like, and all sorts. Because again, yes, such as the trajectory we are on, elites are extremely frightened, um, and they know that their 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 days are numbered. Yeah. Just to give a little anecdote, because I you know I I really want to put this in into perspective yes. for people. Um, when I worked at uh, RT America um, mm -hmm. back in, uh, let's say, uh, 2015, I believe, um, we had, uh, for the purposes of news gathering, uh, access to an application called Data Miner, which was very expensive. Uh, Data Miner is, of course, used by intelligence agencies. Has MI6 people on its board. Yeah. So I would go out and I, I set my data miner settings to find protest related things on social media. Um, that was how I personalized my, my profile yes. on it. And I would go out and I would cover protests. And when I, whenever I filmed something particularly spicy, I would hit the post thing, the post button on Twitter. And within moments I would have no retweets yet. And I would see, a notification on data miner for my own tweet um this is you know fall or d while i'm following around things like black blocks and anti and so yeah. on shutting down highways and, and whatnot now that was like 2015 2016 <clears throat> 
that was before the advent of artificial intelligence. Well, not yeah. the advent, but you know, before it really became as sophisticated as it is today. And we see there's a there's a British company which I have some reporting on uh, coming um, called Logically, which yes. uses artificial intelligence to consume all social media posts. Basically, every public social media post, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. The entire fire hose, as it were. The entire fire hose. Um, so, I mean, that that's the kind of uh, targeting, uh, mass consumption and, 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 and targeting that becomes possible with um, these kinds of things. So Yeah, I mean, I might add about data miner as well. I mean, this is something that I wrote back, uh, all, almost a year to the day uh, for Mint Press sure. on data miner. That it, what, what, what's really quite remarkable is uh, people may remember, or again, such as the pace that, that events move these days, they may have forgotten, that in April 2023, former CIA director Michael Morell admitted that he had orchestrated the letter um, the joint letter that torpedoed the New York Post's reporting on Hunter Biden's laptop. Now, again, um, this was a, a pretty fraught and, and frenzied time, but this was a joint letter signed by a variety, I think it was 51 former senior intelligence officials, um, who endor they endorsed this joint letter, which stated, while we have no evidence to suggest this is the case, we think that the Hunter Biden laptop is Russian disinformation. Yeah. It's the result of a Russian disinformation campaign. And it, it, this letter was cited by Biden when Trump grilled him about the, this on the campaign trail. Sharing of the Hunter Biden laptop story was banned on social networks. People who shared it got banned. Um, and and new, the New York Post Twitter account got banned as well um, temporarily, yeah, but and was that's reinstated right. due to due to backlash. And uh, Morell has admitted that yes, that like that this was this was explicitly to help Biden. It was an October. It was a reverse October surprise because the stuff on that laptop is absolutely incendiary and it's been completely forgotten now. But the point is, is that I by doing an um, enormous amount of uh, Googling, <laughs> found that a, a, a large number of these people who signed this letter, uh, this joint letter, were connected to a shadowy consultancy firm called Beacon Global Strategies, which is effectively the parent company of Data Miner. Yeah. Now, this raises the very and they're charged with marketing it and so, so many CIA it. ops get laundered through consultancy firms. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, what's the, what was that firm that Obama C worked for? Oh, that was business. the Business International Corporation. Sure, uh, yeah, but the, uh, it, 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 but the, the point, sorry, the point is, is yeah, that like most uh, most of the senior CIA and NSA and Pentagon people who signed th this joint letter were connected to Beacon. Now, this raises, at least from my perspective, a very obvious question of whether the suppression of the Biden, the Hunter Biden laptop story was just one component of something much bigger and more sinister. Mm. Were, was data miner used to look at the people who were sharing this? Like, because data miner effectively allows you to break down who this person is connected to, who they, who, who particular social media users yeah. um, communicate with yeah. and all this other stuff. And it's like, well, I mean, was that that aspect of it just, I mean, ensuring that literally no reference to this was made online and just like really drilling down and censoring and banning anyone who took an interest in this. Bearing in mind that Data Miner also has a contract with the FBI. Yeah. And the the Biden administration came into office clearly wanting to just completely neutralize Trump Trump and his supporters. Was there an offline component too, with the bureau look, tasked with looking into the kind of people who were sharing this stuff? Because it was that was that it was that radioactive. Yeah, and, and that is the, the the profusion of people tied to Beacon and, and therefore Data Miner who were, were signatories of this letter is like really quite disconcerting. And it raises very obvious questions, which, of course, have not been asked in the mm. mainstream media. Because why would they? It's not their job. Yeah. Yeah. It's our job. 